This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So you're literally walking into the arena here, the Intercontinental Champion, and you're unsigned. And um, everybody's probably a little nervous about that. Uh, I'm sure that Vince McMahon at least thinks of Bret Hart and Survivor Series 97. And he probably thinks of Medusa showing up on Nitro. But when, when, I, he, I, had that, let me just, when, he, when he had that conversation with you on the 15th, and he said, can I count on you to be there as the son of a promoter? He probably feels like this is different. Jeff's going to be there. Would you agree with that? I, 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 and again, I'll go back to my delusional, optimistic mindset, but I, I sincerely believe he absolutely believed that. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a random name here, but we got to mention it because it's in print. Bob Holly wrote this in his book talking about you. He walked into the arena for the pay-per-view without his gear and went straight to Vince. Backstage, we could all hear them yelling in Vince's office. Jeff was demanding that Vince pay him all the money he was owed from previous events and the money for the match he was going to do that night, or he wasn't going to go to the ring. Shane, Vince's son, was really vocal. He was cussing Jeff out and was ready to beat the shit out of him. Jeff is a mild mannered guy who wouldn't fight anybody. So he just sat there and held his ground. Let's time out right there. Was there a shouting match in Vince's office? No. When you go, when you walk in the building, do you come in without your gear? So <laughs> this is where uh, that's crazy. And what, what's kind of mesmerizing to me, Bob Holly's not just Bob Holly, but Bob Holly's editor thought it was important enough to their book to put that in his book, completely incorrect, not factual at all. That, but, but here we are still talking about it. But so, I mean, that, that, that just, the context of that is a little uh, amusing to me, I'll say. But no, so what, what was interesting was, got up, showered. I don't know if we, me and Brian, I'm sure ate breakfast. But anyway, we got out of the car and Brian got his bag out and I just shut the trunk. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm not going to take my gear in. I don't really know how this is going to go. He goes, well, what do you mean? I said, Brian, I said, we've got some business transactions to take care of. Brian, I don't want to know nothing about it. And he walked off. You know, we walked in together, but he's like, I don't want to. I, and I just left my gear in the car because I really didn't know from Friday to Sunday how, what, Look, Vince has a show. He has a promotion. He's responsible well, at this point. Maybe he wrote something else, right? He's, he's responsible at this point on Sunday, October 17th, to everybody else except me. Yeah. He knows I'm going to work for his competitor, and rightly so. So he could have very easily said, Jeff, we're going to go in a different direction. I appreciate you being here. I'm probably going to pay you a couple hundred bucks for just showing up. We're going to catch you up your money. Hey, you know what? Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. But you got to understand, we're going to do a count out. We're going to do a change title. A couple of years before that, they did a Shawn Michaels, Shane Douglas deal. I mean, yeah. there's been all kinds of things. We're just going to go in a different direction. Hey, Jeff, matter of fact, remember the day you started and you came up and we did that whole Survivor Series deal and all that? We don't want to get in. We don't want to put ourselves in this kind of environment. It's probably just a lot better, not only for us, but for you. Thanks, but no thanks. Call Beth tomorrow for your stocks, and we're going to get you paid up, and your checks will keep coming on time. How did I know that wouldn't, that conversation wasn't going to take place? So what did happen? So, uh, and it's funny, uh, preparing for this week, and, and obviously it, we know all the news real time that's going on. But, uh, and when I went back to WWE in, in 2019, actually my bad in 2018 for the hall of fame. And then 2019, when I was working with his individual day in and day out. So I get to the building, go in, Terry Taylor was one of the first guys that I saw. Hey Jeff, good to see you. And I think they had sort of broken from production meeting and, and I'd like to hear the podcast. I just heard, and look, I, I nobody likes this, but I heard Jim didn't have a real good production meeting. Um, because they knew sort of the set of circumstances and that kind of stuff. But um, 
so I go in and I tell Terry, I'm trying to think somebody else was there, but I, I just said, Hey, I, I'd like to work something out today. We need to figure this out. And Terry's like, what are you talking about? And I said, Terry, it's probably not a conversation for you uh, to have. Uh, he said, well, who is? I said, look, I'll talk to Vince. I, I'll talk to JR. I, 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 you guys got a show to run, but you know, if, if, if we're going to get a deal done, we probably need to get on it now because there's a lot of ins and outs to it. And Terry's just like, get a deal done. I said, it's not about the match. It's, it's not. It's, just, it's not about the match. Okay, I'll be back. And so I go out in the arena and they're load in, load out. And I just sit, you know, maybe 15th row ringside, uh, opposite end of entrance, and just sort of sat down in my chair and just started thinking through what I had strategized in my brain. And I look over to my corner and uh, this gentleman retold the story through his eyes. And I'm talking about a young, brand new in the WWF this times, who had just sort of come on board maybe a year prior, Mark Carano. Wow. <laughs> Mark Carano's job description for October the 17th, 1999, words out of his mouth were to follow Jarrett and the belt. And I said, and I asked him in 2018, follow Jarrett and the belt. Like, what does that mean? He goes, we want to know where the belt was. I'm like, oh my gosh. That, so that, I, you know, so I, Mark, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just standing over here. And I just, I didn't really put two and two together at the time, but his job was to follow me around and keep an eye on me. I was going to leave. He was to give everybody the heads up and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, if this was a football game, he was the QB spy. He's just watching the ball. He's just that's watching that's you. All he was doing, and no ball was in the. the it was in the uh, gun arena. It was in the car in the trunk. So you, you specifically left it and your gear in your bag in the car. Yeah, and and that is not. I'm going to flex my muscles. I had. I truly had no idea how the day was going to go. Hypothetically, but, was it one of your Halliburtons? No. That would have been hilarious. Toomey. It's Toomey Duffel. Would have been hilarious. Yeah. So you, you you tell Terry, hey, I need to talk to Vince. And you, I, I, I specifically remember, I'll talk to Vince if that's what needs to happen, or I'll talk to JR, or I'll talk to anybody. But I want to talk about money today. And what happened? So uh, sat down. Uh, JR came up. And sat down and says, where are we at? I said, well, Jim, I really hate. Are you in catering? Are you in the arena? Where in the arena. Okay. And I said, uh, you know, Jim, uh, no, Terry left on the first conversation. He came back for the conversations following, but me and JR sat down. And he's like, where are we at? And I said, Jim, I just want to say, man, I hate that this is where we're at. I feel as a character, I'm about as hot as I've been since several years ago, but I said, I, I got, I got it. I understood that, uh, you got to make your decisions and Vince has to make his decisions. Well, Jeff, you know, and you know, I, I, we thought we had a deal. I said, I, I don't know how you could think that I, I, I was never, I never signed anything. And I, I never saw, I, I never saw a contract. I, I mean, there was nothing. And he goes, well, I thought we'd come to agreement. Business is so hot man, you don't want to go down to that place. And I'm like, this isn't, you know, I don't even know if he said that, but it was just pretty much chit chat, small talk, because at this point he knew the ship had sailed. It's done. Yeah. Done. And uh, I said, so Jim, here's, the, here's the situation. I want to make everybody's life easier from today. Moving forward. I want to get out of your hair and not specifically you, Jim, but the WWF's hair I, I want there to be a nice parting of the ways. Let's do our business today and move on. You guys got a lot on your horizon, public, going public tomorrow. You got Raw, you got SmackDown, you know, UPN. That was a really big deal. I mean, SmackDown was, I, I, it was, I don't think uh, we probably stressed enough on how big of a deal it was during that summer that, quote unquote, our television distribution doubled to a network. I mean, it was big. Big, big news. I was on the very first SmackDown, and me and China had several cool um, storylines. You know, uh, I mean, I was th we did the mud match on that. So SmackDown was a big component of this. So there was a lot going on in Jim's eyes. Everybody's workload, quote-unquote, exponentially went up. 
it, it wasn't just, at, you know, we're so common to it today. And it's amazing, you know, WrestleMania week has Raw, SmackDown, Hall of Fame, NXT 1, NXT 2. I mean, there's so much we're doing it. Back in those days, it was Raw and TV. I mean, it was Raw and pay-per-view, Raw and pay-per-view and live events. So adding another two-hour network show was big business. So anyway, back to the story. So we're, we're, I said, listen, I want this real. He said, well, what do you got in mind? I said, I want to clean it up. I said, you know the payoffs that I have coming to me. I said, I'd, I'd, I, I, I really think it's best for everybody. I want to get paid for all the money I have coming for me. You know what that is, Jeff? And I said, as far as dates, I said, yeah, I know my live events that I hadn't got paid. And I said, I got the pay-per-views and we got the day to cover. So I, I would like to clean all that up. Well, I don't know if we can do that, Jeff. I said, okay, I, I understand that. You guys can't meet that. Then I don't really know why I'm here. Yeah. I have zero leverage when I leave today, Jim. You're an old timer like me. Once I, once today's over, it's over. You're yeah, going to make that I want to add context to that because you said earlier, you felt like you'd been shortchanged on some payoffs. You specifically cited some loops that you were on with Dustin and you went back and you complained and they wrote another check. But as you said, you didn't know if it was necessarily making a correction as much as it was just placating you. Well, by God, that's because he's trying to keep his intercontinental champion happy and let's just keep the wheel going. But if you're going to another company, well, what's my motivation to fix your pay now? No, but all leverage, if you don't go ahead and square up right now, and you probably did have your quarterly checks for royalties. You had a track record of about what I'd been making on the house shows when it was the accurate number, not the low ball number. And you probably had a track record for what your pay-per-view payoffs were. So in my head, we haven't talked about this. You add all that together and say, here's the number I think it is. And here's how I got to that number. Is that right? So I, you know, let's, it's three or four house show runs and uh, two or three pay-per-views. And I knew the number in my head, but I put on the negotiation hat and I said, in, in theory, you know, can we get this done? Well, and this went back and forth with me, me and Jim a couple of times. And I said, can I get my money today? Uh, Jeff, it ain't up to me. It's up to the old man. Okay. Find out. I, I've, I've, I've just got time today, Jim. He got up, went back, did it. And, and, and I, I don't know exactly, but, but I know that I made them go first. What is the number? They, you, you always make them go first. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> what, what is that number? And, you know, and, and this is where it gets into. And, and, you know, I had so much time that day on my hands that, I, I had the match in my mind, and I know Pat and China, and we'll get to that in a minute, but Pat Patterson and China are going over different ideas. They've got fish and guitars and flour and powder and, you know, the prep for all the match. And I'm sitting in the arena with my street clothes on, talking to Jim Ross and Terry Taylor and trying to figure this out. So there's a it's – a, it's an interesting set of circumstances going on. But Jim came back and said, yeah. And I said, well, what's the number? What, what are you paying me? Because me trying to throw a number is, is, is something that you just don't do. Yeah, you work down from that. So you let them start and you go up from that. Yes, but also it's not, it's not like, hey, I'm at the garden. I want uh, five grand for my shot. Yeah, no. they always determine the payoff. And 100%. Then that's, and that's common ground. And that's pretty a practical matter. The promoter knows what the gross house is. It knows what his expenses are. The talent doesn't. So it wasn't like out in ordinary that I'm saying, hey, you go, you know, Conrad, as a business person, negotiation, you, you, you anchor the uh, negotiation. I, I get all that. That wasn't even my mindset. You're going to have to tell me what that number is. So they came back with a number. And I just sat there and I said, let me think on it. And so I think we got a deal, Jeff. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. And then, you know, the whole idea of cash and, I mean, it just gets so preposterous. The stories that have run down and bank wiring and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, how that story went from bank wiring and it's a Sunday, does that even make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Let's mention that. From Bob Holly, he says, Vince said he'd make sure Jeff Jarrett was paid, but Jeff said he wanted the money wired into his account immediately before he brought his bag and the IC belt in. 
Otherwise he was get, otherwise he was getting on a plane and going home. I thought it was wrong to do that. I sort of understood where he was coming from because sometimes it took up to six months to get our pay-per-view checks. He was owed a lot of money. And I guess he was worried that Vince wouldn't pay him. Even so you don't hold somebody up like that. Management had spent so much money building up the match as one of the main events. They couldn't turn it around. They had to deliver Jarrett versus China. And since Jarrett was the IC champ going in, he had Vince over a barrel. When Jarrett confirmed that his wife had the money over $300,000 had arrived in his account. He brought in his bag, got dressed and stayed away from everybody. Road dog being the loyal friend he is stayed by Jeff's side. So you see right there, uh, Bob is saying it was wired. I've always thought, I don't know many bank wires you can get done on a Sunday uh, in and ever period. You can't get bank wires on Sunday. And then, uh, the other thing that we've heard is Jim Ross says somewhere in an interview that you wanted it and that you wanted it in cash. And when and he said, well, Jeff, there's no banks open on Sunday. What do we do? Supposedly they paid you in cash. Did they pay you in cash? The whole, so I, it just, just think about that. I'm going to get money wired on a Sunday and my wife is going to just, oh boy. So, so, um, it, it, I love the wrestling industry because you want, you, you want the fictitious story or you want the truth. So anyway, it's just crazy. No wiring. So anyway, so he came to me, um, and, 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 and look, the, the, look, I'm, I, I told you you're in charge of topics. I'm in charge of truth. So, uh, Jim comes to me and they said, we've sort of done pen to paper and we're thinking 150, we're, we're thinking 150, we'll get it all cleaned up. And I said, okay. All right, Jim, 150 is what you think the number is. You sure? And we more or less did a head nod. And I said, you know, Jim, let me, let me think on this. And, and I uh, said, so this is going on in and blah, 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 this. So he said, I'll be back and let's close this deal up. So however much time transpired, half hour, one of those things, it might've been an hour, might've been 15 minutes, whatever it was. But when he came and sat back down, I said, Jim, remember how you changed the deal on me a year in? And he's like, well, yeah, I said, no, I said, that's, and I said, I understand all the reasons you did. And I respect the hell out of it, but we kind of agreed, but we didn't really kind of agree on 150. I don't really agree with that right now. And I've had time to reflect on my last two years. So if we're going to get a deal done, this place, Gundarina is sold out for sure. And they've got a lot of WWE's money in their box office. So let's double that and get me to 300. And those are my payoffs because I get a healthy payoff out of tonight because, quote, unquote, I'm doing the honors. And give me a, a, the money out of Gundarina's bank, not WWE's bank, and let's go to work. And he didn't like it. What did he say? He just, ah, Jeff, you can't do that. I said, I totally. And I said, Jim, look me, please look at me because I really want you to understand where I'm coming from. You're absolutely right. You do not have to do this. Vince does not have to do this. Nobody has to do this. I'm wanting my money to, 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 to and I'm talking about multiple pay-per-views, the scenario, I'm not under contract. Let's just end this deal one way or another. But I says, you know as well as I do, tomorrow my value and payoffs are not even remotely important. They're kind of important today. But it's y'all's decision on how important they are, not mine. It's not my decision at all. Okay, I'm going to go talk to the old man. 30 minutes go by, 45 minutes go by, wh whatever it may be. And Jim and Terry walked up and said, go get your bag. Get dressed. We'll have it for you before you go to the ring. I said, okay. I went, and I'd seen China walking around multiple times you know, and he's and nervous. It's her big night. It's her, and, and, and it, you know, not that it was my responsibility to be worrying about her personal feelings, but I did have some compassion for her. I really did because look, it was, it was her night and, and, and in so many ways, and she deserved every bit of it. 
there, there, without question, she worked her ass off. Obviously, she worked her ass off in the gym. You know, at that time, the, you know, her relationship. I mean, she she had done what it. She deserved everything she was getting that night. And it feels and, like if you're in her shoes, it might be in jeopardy now. Here we are, and it might not happen. For sure. Especially what happened on the month before pay-per-view. Happened on Raw. I throw her down the deal. Yeah. I mean, so so all, all, everything going on. And this wasn't going to be, look, how many, well, I, I mean, I hadn't been in any good housekeeping matches, but I've been in plenty of ballroom brawls and moondog matches. Yeah. No holes barred in cage. I've been in, you know, I've been in the business. So all kinds of gimmick matches. I had no problem putting together in my mind. No problem to, to, to piece it together. I already had had it in my mind the prior week leading up to it. We can do this and we can do that. I'd already had the match in my mind pretty much laid out, but me and her hadn't discussed it. Right. Uh, and then Pat had that because, and man, We'll get to that in a second. I don't know where you want to go with it. If you want to go talk about the match now, but I mean, just Pat, I got to just throw this in there. So once we knew the match was going on, Pat and and I'm trying to think who else because I think Teddy Long, but so, but Pat goes, Jeff, I can't do his accent, but he's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to throw him a hell of a curve, and when he lays out that curve, that it looks like I've you know. DQ, whatever it was that I, I, I we're going to get out of it. And the belt didn't switch in hands. I just said, brilliant. I said, the people will come on glued. The false finish that we gave them it was a DQ or whatever it was, but, but that was a Pat Patterson. I'm like, this is brilliant. Well, let, let, since you brought up the match, let's talk about the match. But before we do, I want to, I want to circle back to two things. One. You asked for it out of the gun to count. And I'm sure some of our listeners were thinking, well, how would he do that? But me being me, I, I just think you're <laughs> thinking, boy, if, if, if I convince them of this and they do something they don't really want to do and they write me a check, you bet your ass before I get to the bank in the morning, that check has had a stop payment issued and it is as worthless as a notebook sheet of paper. A hundred percent. So if I ask for it from the gunned account, whatever the gate was that night, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand, whatever it is, it'll just be three hundred light. It's it's very simple, and and to tell you the truth, how much easier does it make it on everybody? It is way easier, and and I think it's a stroke of genius. But I also love that because I'm such a nerd. When you filed your taxes that year, you got a fucking ten ninety nine from the gun. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Right. So boy, God, I love the line. When you sit Jim Ross down and you know, this guy down beside me, he wanted to do business. He didn't have to walk out there, but he did. <laughs> and he's, and he's, he's, uh, he's taking his lumps. Now you felt like he got over on you once before. And when he comes back to visit you the second or third time, whatever it is. And you said, Remember Jim, when you changed my contract, like in that very moment, you didn't need any blue chew, did you? <laughs> well, you got your sponsor in there, did you? I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five-star review after five-star review. We make it fast. We make it easy and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to save with Conrad.com. But serious business, this has to feel like I got you, right? It's a receipt. I think they call it in wrestling. That is what, uh, to, to me, and I don't think I ever voiced it to, um, I know I never voiced it to Jill. I never, me and my accountant had conversations I, and I didn't really, that was embarrassing to me, to, to talent. So I, I, I don't know that any talent really knew the depths of that, but, but it was a real ball shot to me, um, that I didn't forget. And would I have handled it today the same way? No, of course not. It's a you know, that age, that stage of career, we all got egos in this industry, everything that goes with it, knowing that 
candidly, and th this is something that a lot of times is completely glossed over. I had worked in WCW prior. I did not want to go back. It's that simple. Vince McMahon and the WWF and Madison Square Garden and Raw and SmackDown, the prestige. I'm a third generation guy. WWF is where stars are made. I did not want to leave. And I had some deep anger and resentment toward JR because it was very obvious. If I'm going to feed my family, I got to go. Well, I, I do want to circle back to this because I feel like this is worth mentioning, especially when you said, boy, when I do it that way today, you're a 32 year old man here. Yeah. 32. You're still a puppy. In years. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.